Hey students, this is episode 13 of Hey Students. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. This vlog might be a little bit different because I'm probably only gonna have one segment to this whole video. I wanna talk about being a musician in, in middle school and high school and uh, it'll probably take up the whole video. So yeah, this this might be a little bit different than the other episodes, but hopefully it's interesting. So uh, in episode nine, I was talking about like, my musical life growing up and how I fell in love with music as a kid. And I, I want to keep talking about like how I became who I am musically. <laughs> and now I want to talk about starting to play music in school. So in sixth grade, this is back when we lived in the Seattle area. Um, I went to Mountain View Middle School in Bremerton, Washington. And I was homeschooled until sixth grade. And sixth grade was my first year of public school. And we were signing up for classes and my parents wanted me to learn the saxophone so that I could, this is literally what they said, so that I could play like Kenny G. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, my sixth grade band, my teacher was Mr. Anderson. He was a really cool dude. The way he had it set up is that if you wanted to learn the saxophone, you had to start on the clarinet first and then halfway through the year you could switch the saxophone. So that, that was the, the plan for me. So. I started on clarinet and I was a clarinet player. I, I don't know when he did this because I was in beginning band, so I don't know how he figured this out, but basically he put us in seats by how good we were on our instrument. So he placed us. The girl, I had a crush on this girl. I'm not gonna tell you what her name is. I had a crush on this girl and she played clarinet and I really wanted to sit by her, but she wasn't good <laughs> at her instrument. And I was pretty good at the clarinet. I just got it, I guess. I don't know, I wasn't that good, but I did what the teacher told me to do and it made the right sounds. He was a good teacher and I just did it. I sat in the front row and my buddy, he also wasn't good at the clarinet. He got to sit by her because both of them weren't good and they sat in the back row of the clarinet section. And I remember, I literally remember thinking this as a kid. I remember thinking, man, maybe I should just mess up on my next playing test so he moves me back there so I can sit next to her. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> anyway, um, I played the clarinet and I really loved it. I wish I had a recording of this, but for one of our concerts, I had a solo in front of the whole concert where I played like a little arrangement of Ina Klein and Nacht music by Mozart for clarinet and piano. Like I wish I had a recording of this because this was like a huge deal. But at the time it was just like the thing that I did. I just learned the song and then just played it. I mean, that's cool, I, I think. I'd love to hear it. I'm sure it sounded terrible. But yeah, I, I loved playing the clarinet. When it came time to switch to saxophone, I decided not to because first we had to get a saxophone and I had a clarinet already. But more importantly, I just loved the clarinet. So I didn't, I didn't change. So sixth grade, seventh grade, played the clarinet. Eighth grade, uh, we moved to new schools, which like I, I said, and I went to different band programs. I had a bunch of different teachers and that was interesting. In ninth grade, I was finally at my school. This was in American Fork Junior High. I made it into the top band at the junior high. And for whatever reason, at the beginning of the year, I decided to switch to bassoon. I still don't know why I chose to do that. I don't know if the teacher was like, hey, we need someone to switch to bassoon. Or if I just randomly was like, I want to learn the bassoon. I don't know why I switched to bassoon but I played bassoon for one semester and I remember taking it home and practicing quite a bit not enough to get good at it though I, I remember loving the low notes that was my favorite thing to do I, I one of the first things I did was figured out how to play really low I loved playing the really low notes but I remember being frustrated if any of you have ever played the bassoon before it's a very difficult instrument your thumbs have all these different keys and buttons that to push and it just doesn't make sense the clarinet it makes a lot more sense. You just lift fingers and it goes higher. But with the bassoon, it's like ee, 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 ee. like all the fingerings just don't make sense. At least they didn't to me in ninth grade and they still don't. And I, I was just frustrated that I couldn't look at the sheet music and just play it. Um, I had to think really hard for every fingering and it just frustrated me. And so at the semester, I switched back to clarinet. And I remember for that first playing test for our seating, I played quite well. And I don't remember how many clarinets. There was maybe 12 of us in the section. I made it all the way up to the second chair. I was good enough to just pull it out and just play it better than the rest of the section. And I remember some of the other people, because I had a couple friends in the clarinet section. And I remember they, they said that they were mad at me because I just like out of nowhere came in and just like beat them all. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Anyway, so I love the clarinet. Then after ninth grade, we moved again. And for 10th grade, I moved to a new school and this is in Colorado. 
So we moved from Utah to Colorado. And in Colorado, I, I went from, from going to a, a big, thriving band program in American Fork to this really small town that had more cows than people. And our band was really small. There was maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20 of us in the high school band. And it was ninth graders through 12th graders. And it was just a small band. We were at a summer band camp. The teacher there, Greg Ludwig, he was really cool. He was also new to the school. So he had just got hired and he came from, I think, New York. I know he went to Ithaca College. So we were both new at the same time. And I remember sitting there the first day in the morning of summer band and he was like, guys, we have to have a tuba player. We didn't have anyone playing tuba. And he's like, we just can't have a band without a tuba player. He's like, is there any of you who'd be willing to switch? And I was like, why not? I, I just moved schools. I didn't have any friends. Everything was different. Colorado was way different than Utah, to me at least. I went from a pretty big suburban area in Utah County to this little teeny town in, in Colorado. I just felt like, why not? Everything else in my life has been upended. I'll, I'll go ahead and play tuba. So I volunteered and I fell in love with that instrument. I loved the tuba. I, I don't know what it was about it. it. I loved playing low, just like the bassoon. It was easier than bassoon for me and it was fun. And I think I enjoyed the the persona of being a tuba player, <laughs> I, I, I guess. So I, I remember a few months into the school year, Mr. Ludwig came up to me and he was like, you know what, Marcus, you've, you've changed in the months that you've been studying the tuba. He's like, you no longer have the personality of a clarinet player. You seem like a tuba player now. <laughs> Which I thought was really funny, and I still think it's funny because like, I was the only tuba player. So it wasn't like I learned the personality of a tuba from another person. It was just playing the instrument changed my personality. I became a little bit more like, hum, hum, a little bit more silly and goofy. Clarinet players tend to be a little bit more competitive and a little bit more like whatever the opposite of laid back is. Not all clarinet players are that way, but that's, that's kind of how I was. And then I just kind of slowly turned into this tuba player. It was just like, yep, I play the tuba. <laughs> anyway, I loved the tuba. I loved it so much. Much. So Mr. Ludwig found this used sousaphone at like a garage sale and he bought it for really cheap like 50 bucks or something and it wasn't working and he took it back to the school and like was tinkering with it and he pulled out from the inside of this tuba he pulled out this old glass Mountain Dew bottle from I don't know when the 80s the 70s I don't know and then it, it then the tuba worked perfectly after that so that was the only problem was that there was a glass soda bottle <laughs> For Mountain Dew inside of I played that that sousaphone we would play at like basketball games and it was just like one of the most fun things ever I just loved just blasting on the tuba and of course I wasn't very good because I was just self-taught I never had any lessons on the tuba not until I got to college and which is why I had tons of bad habits to fix but um, I just loved it I also did choir I auditioned for the choir in 10th grade. It was the first time I ever did choir other than like just singing at church. I auditioned using the music of the night from uh, the Phantom of the Opera. I didn't know that you could sing falsetto and that's actually a real thing. I thought that you weren't supposed to do that because it'd make you sound like a girl. So falsetto is when a male who has a changed voice, when they, like when I'm singing down here, do, re, mi, fa, so, that's just in like, I don't know what they call it, the chest voice, the head voice. And then when you switch to falsetto, it's like That's falsetto, that like, when you switch, that registers of your voice. I didn't know that falsetto was allowed. I thought you weren't supposed to sing that way. And so I was singing the song that was way too high for me and I was just like, Nighttime, what? It was like way too high. But our choir was so small and they needed boys to be in it that I made it into the top choir just because I was a male. I mean, I, I wasn't tone deaf, but I certainly wasn't very good at singing. I sang tenor for a while until we realized that I was actually a bass or a baritone, and so I switched to the bass part. I loved choir. It was really fun. Choir and band were always like my thing. Mr. Ludwig, I think my junior started a jazz band and there were just a few of us, maybe seven or eight kids in this little jazz band, but we loved it. I My parents got me, they had bought like a used alto saxophone, like a really cheap alto saxophone used from 
garage sale or something. And so I taught myself how to play the alto. And then in, in this jazz band, they needed a tenor saxophone. So I played tenor saxophone in the jazz band. And I never, I was never very good. I, I knew how to improvise using the blues scale. <laughs> Woo but I spent hours and hours playing and improvising at home just because it was so fun. I just, music was so fun. It was such a huge part of my life. Um, and it wasn't the only part of my life, but it, it was fun and I loved it. And that's why, that's why I think I became a music teacher because it, it was so rewarding. My, my two teachers, Miss Bull was my choir teacher and she was awesome. And Mr. Ludwig was my band teacher. And Mr. Ludwig helped me gain a desire to, to become a, a music teacher in the future. Ms. Bull and, and Mr. Ludwig were my only two music teachers in high school. I, I didn't have any private teachers or anything, so I, I owe a lot of what I am and who I am in my career to those two high school teachers. I recognize how much power a teacher has to influence people for good, and that's one of the reasons why I chose to become a music teacher, because I hope in a small little way to influence you guys to help you find who you are and who you want to be and, and what you love whether that's music or something else and you notice I didn't talk a lot about Mr. Anderson my my first music teacher my first band teacher because I don't remember a lot from middle school and and you know what you guys probably won't remember a lot about me either <laughs> which is sad but you know 10 years from now you you might not even remember who I am you might have a couple memories hopefully but and that's okay I, I understand that you forget by the time you're an adult, you're going to forget a lot of what happens in middle school. Because um, I did, I, I do have memories of middle school, but not very many. And I do remember Mr. Anderson, but um, even though a lot of you are going to forget a lot of what we do in class and a lot of what of you know the things I teach you, I, I hope that it still prepares you for your future. And that you're able to say that music made an important impact in your life in a good way. Whether that's because of what you did in my class or something else, that's fine. I just want you guys to love who you are and love music making, or at least enjoy music making to a point that you feel like, yeah, that was that was good. That was positive for my life and my growth. That's kind of that little segment of my musical life is, is middle school and, and high school. Um, later, I'll talk about what it was like in college for me and, and maybe even after college. But yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's uh, maybe a little strange. I hope you have a good week. We'll catch you on the flippity flip. What the heck? There is this dude dressed like Nacho Libre.